This one is very personal, okay? <laughs> what decided you to move from Spain to the UK? Is it only because of photography? <laughs> this is such a hard question. Being a photographer, which type of girl would be perfect match for me? Today I'm gonna reply to every single question you guys ask me on my YouTube community and on my Instagram account. And I love doing this, I never did it before, like a Q&A video, because you guys ask me so many questions that actually challenge myself. And it's very good because it made me think about my future, about my life, and about my career in general. So I think this is gonna be super useful as well for you to have some insights about my background and maybe for your background as well, what you can apply. And it's such a way as well to connect with you in a deeper level. So let's go to the questions on Instagram because they're very interesting. So the first one would be, and this is super interesting as well for you. Did you study photography or you are a self-made photographer? I'm a self-made photographer. So my story is I studied graphic design and editorial production. So everything related to design and actually magazines, design magazines, and I love it. But then with time, my parents, they are photographers for a hobby, not professionally. And I started to go with them to take surf photography in the beach. And I never thought I would like photography so much. And then I got hooked and I became a surf photographer, but then I started to explore a lot of areas and I became a portrait photographer. That's the third version, but I'm self-made. Nowadays with courses, tutorials, YouTube, with everything out there we have available, you can learn to be a photographer. So I became a full-time professional photographer in London, being self-made, so you can do it too. There is a lot of videos and courses, and I recommend you always to invest in knowledge. I do have so many platforms I always recommend, like Creative Life, Skillshare, or buy, for example, courses from other creators you like and other photographers, or just YouTube videos. This is gonna help you a lot, and it's all you need to become a professional photographer. <laughs> Next question, ever consider being a model? Okay, in London I didn't do much, but in Spain I've used to do some things, but just as an experience. And actually I'm a model now, but for myself. And this is where I enjoy the most, because I'm not shy in front of the camera, because there is nobody looking at me. It's just me, my creativity and my camera. And I recommend you to do this all the time to practice, but also because I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to lose the fear to the camera nowadays and self-portrait photography is such a great way to do it. But yeah, I did my things as a model in Spain, but not anymore, just for myself. The next question, who are you? So this is my friend Andrew, he's an amazing creator as well. Who are you so damn talented? But seriously, how much time you dedicate to improving skills? Thank you so much, Andrew, because you have so much talent as well. He's an amazing creator. But basically, I learn a lot of things constantly. I mentioned time ago, it's very rare when I watch Netflix or things like that. Maybe I keep that for Sundays, my lazy days, even though I post on Sundays. But yeah, normally I hang out in Skillshare on YouTube a lot. I consume too much of YouTube because I feel inspired by other creators. I learn video, I learn more about photography, tutorials, photo editing, uh, video editing as well. This is my main thing right now because I wanna improve my videos. I'm all the time feeding my knowledge. I like to watch YouTube. I like to watch other creators and photographers how they do stuff because I'm continuously learning a lot of stuff. And video I learned during the pandemic. I did a course, then I was on YouTube, and it's how I learned. I'm always feeding my skills because I think in the creative industry, you really have to do this if you want to grow. <laughs> Next question. Um, okay, this one is in Spanish. Uh, ¿Cuál fue tu ruta de aprendizaje para ser fotógrafa? ¿Autores favoritos? ¿Te gusta el analógico? Which route I follow to learn in photography? Then my favorite artists, photographers. And if I like film. So the first one, um, the learning process, I already told you. Like I'm self-made, I learned sort of photography, just trying as a hobby, and then I started to feel curious about another niches. And then I became a portrait photographer in London because I just love it. It's the short version of that, because otherwise it's too long. If this is something you're interested about, about learning my whole process, I can do a video about this, so comment below. And then, uh, favorite authors. Okay, this is something, there is so many famous photographers out there, like celebrities with many followers, they are incredible, they have an amazing team. And I'm gonna be honest with you, so many of my favorite photographers, they are people I didn't even know before because nowadays there is so many talented photographers out there and they don't have the enough recognition out there. So uh, I do support a lot of photographers because they are incredible and I know how it is to grow in this industry. But there is one photographer, this one is quite famous, but she became famous when she was dead, 
which is quite sad, but the pictures are amazing. She is Vivian Mayer. Let me know in the comments below, you know her. So she was taking pictures on the 1950s. She was a nanny and she was taking pictures for years and years and years in Chicago and New York. She's a street photographer. And it's very nice because nobody knew about her pictures till she died and they found in an auction of her pictures all the pictures she had, over a hundred thousand negatives of all the decades she was shooting street photography. And she was a self-portrait photographer as well, quite different to me obviously, but she was incredible. She was shooting film, the pictures have so much feeling and this is the only photographer till the date that actually I feel like wow, so much nostalgia. I can see what she was seeing back in the days. It's beautiful street photography. I really, really like it. And then there's other photographers, they are very big, but they're more artistic or fashion photographers, which is great, but I appreciate photographers that actually have a sentiment and emotion when they click. And Vivian Mayer had that. And she was very attached to poverty because she was poor herself. She was a nanny, as I told you before, and three of the kids she was taking care of were the ones who actually bought an apartment for her because she was very poor. And then they found the pictures and she became huge. So actually the guy who found those pictures became very rich, but actually the guy was doing good because he wanted to give her a sponsor and now it's great. She has a collection of over 100,000 negatives and is everywhere around the world. So I think this is an amazing story. So long, I feel like I talk a lot, but I think it's very interesting about this artist. Check her out if you like, because there is so many pictures a part of the ones I show you, and I think they are great. The other question, do you like film? I do like film, but I don't do it enough. I do have my Minolta, this one, you saw it many times on my YouTube thumbnails because it's very sexy looking, from the 80s. And then I have a Polaroid from the 80s as well, but I have it in Spain. And I do have a brownie, which is super, super old. And that one is in Spain as well. I like to collect uh, cameras, old cameras, but I don't shoot enough film. The one I shoot the most is with the Minolta, but I don't have time to shoot film, but I wanna come back at it, that's for sure. I shoot a lot of digital for my clients now. Um, my friend, my beautiful friend, Joanna, you know her because I have a couple of vlogs with her. And she's asking me, what's your life goal in terms of work? I wanna make a living with my camera, which I do already, but obviously it's always a roller coaster. Some months are good, some months are bad, <laughs> but I want something like to be steady and, um, and good enough, you know? So basically my goals are carry on being a photographer and earning my living with my camera, like I do now. But on top of that, make money online with my pictures, which is enough money to sustain myself even if I don't have clients. But this is why I started my YouTube channel during the pandemic at the beginning. I feel fulfilled when I teach photography and it's such a great way to pass my skills to the online world. So basically I wanna be able to be fully remote and no matter when I'm gonna travel, because I'm gonna come back to travel soon, that I can make money with my camera and my videos. This is my goal, basically. So you're gonna follow along with it on my channel if you follow for long enough. <laughs> Will you ever move from London when you become more successful? 100% yes. It's true, like London is very cool. I love London, but it's like a toxic relationship. It's love and hate. And lately I'm hating it a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of work here, so I love it because of that. There is creative industry here. I love it because of that. It's an incredible city. I love it because of that but my body is asking me to live in nature. I'm a free diver, I'm a scuba diver, I love to surf. I wanna be able to have that lifestyle and I cannot have it in London for obvious reasons. There is no sea, there is no good weather, there is a lot of pollution, a lot of noise, and uh, my soul asks me for something else. I wanna go to Asia because I've been there and I think it's incredible. Life is super cheap as well and the photography you can take there, it's amazing. So yes, I will leave London 100%. I don't know when though, but if you follow my channel, you will know about this because 100% you're gonna be able to see it because I don't think I'm gonna take too long to leave London. Which techniques do you use to get the best poses for the client to be comfortable in front of the camera? I'm gonna do specific videos about this because there is a lot to talk about, but I'm gonna reply roughly. Mostly I'm very friendly. I smile a lot. I'm very silly sometimes, and this makes the client more comfortable right away. And then if I ask him for the client to do a pose, I do it myself first. Because many photographers, maybe they say, okay, do, do this, this and that. And they don't imitate what they are saying. And it's very hard for the client. 
But uh, one of my techniques is ask to the client to move. When they are moving, I catch them moving with the flash and I always catch them in soft movement where they look more natural. Maybe the first 10 minutes, they're a bit more shy or more, you know, uncomfortable, but I'm very bubbly, I'm very silly, and I think you have to be as well. Because if they see you very serious, they're gonna be so intimidated. So you just have to be super relaxed and, you know, be super funny as well, be silly. You are working, but you are a human being and the other person is suffering in front of your camera, so don't make it even harder. <laughs> but I will do a video about this for sure. Have you ever met deaf photographers? No, I didn't. I didn't. At least so far I didn't. And I'm sure um, they would be great because they do say when you miss a sense, you really make the others sharper. And I do believe on this. So it would be very interesting to see, but no, I didn't meet any yet. Then someone I know from Spain, when are you coming back to your land? I don't even know. It's almost two years I don't go to visit my family in Spain because of obvious reasons, everything has been so complicated. Work, PCR test, blah, 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 blah. I was so angry at that. It's like, I don't even want to travel because I don't want to have to face it. But the world is reopening. So I think I'm going to go in August this year to my parents' apartment by the beach because it's very relaxing. And trust me, I need it. <laughs> I need to travel again. Who would you like to collaborate with? I think there is a lot of exposure for some photographers and then there is amazing photographers out there, very talented, even more than the bigger names, and they don't have recognition enough. So I would like to collaborate with every single photographer or videographer, filmmaker, that is at my same level or more. And I'm not saying this because ah, I don't want to collaborate with beginners. This is going to be super useful for you as well if you are a beginner. You can collaborate with beginners as well, go out there to shoot, that's amazing. But if you collaborate with people who are bigger than you, you want to learn a lot or with the same level because you can learn their techniques or they can learn from you as well. And this is super fun because this is the way to learn and feel inspired and exchange knowledge. And you should do the same if you are a beginner, intermediate or professional, because I think we have to push each other up because for me, there is no competition in photography. I think we all share the same passion. Why are we going to be like jealousy or trying to don't give exposure to another one? You have your style. Why are you worried about? So yes, I think we should cherish more each other and collaborate more with each other. Skills and weak points. Skills, um, I dare to say I have a lot because as I told you, I'm a geek of learning new stuff. So photography skills, obviously, in almost every single niche. Obviously, my main one is portrait, but I try to be good at all of them because I love it and also because it gives you more functionality in terms of earning money with clients. You have more ways to make money. So photography, graphic design, because it's what I studied, editorial design, because it's what I studied as well, web design, because I studied, uh, photo retouching, I did a few courses, so I guess I'm self-tough, but yeah, photo retouching as well, filmmaking, even if I'm not I'm, I don't consider myself a filmmaker at all, okay? <laughs> I'm not at that level yet. So yeah, video, I guess I'm still learning. Well, photography gear, lighting techniques, studio lighting, all of that I know, self tough as well. And all of that, I'm not gonna <laughs> carry on going, but in terms of creativity, I think I know quite a lot, but I wanna keep improving myself because there is always new things to learn. Weak points, this is a massive one I have. Uh, I do have weak points, but the main one, the main one which is uh, poisoning me is work-life balance. I'm crap. I overwork all the time. I'm working from Monday till Sunday because Sunday I try to be off, but I'm still posting YouTube videos on Sundays, so I still work half a day. So I don't have work-life balance. I don't know the limits. So my main weak point is Work-life balance, I'm very bad at it. I keep too absorbed with work because I love it. And yes, I can get very stressed because of that. Those are my weak points. Uh, this one is in Spanish. ¿Cuál ha sido tu mayor obstáculo en el desarrollo de tu carrera y cómo aconsejas superarlo? Un abrazo desde Costa Rica. Thank you, Roberto, by the way. Like, you are very supportive of my channel. So the main obstacle I had is listening to people who didn't believe in me because we are always doubting ourselves and more in the creative industry you don't trust in yourself you don't trust in your skills maybe you are freaking amazing and you still think you are not so when you have family or friends whoever it is 
who is telling you, ah, no, you're not gonna make it, you're crazy, you're not gonna be freelance, you have to work for someone else, retire when you are 65, so you have the pension from the government. <laughs> this, as you can tell, is very specific because it, it keeps happening to me. Don't listen. It's, I mean, they do it sometimes because they want the best for you, but you have to keep pushing with your dreams because if you have doubts, and on top of that, they put doubts on you, you're gonna feel so unmotivated and you're not gonna do it. So my best advice would be don't listen to those voices because I would have come to London way earlier than when I came nine years ago if it wouldn't be because my family wouldn't agree with me. I was too scared to have arguments with them, so I let the years pass and I didn't do it. Till one day I booked a flight and I came to London because I couldn't stand it anymore. I wanted to chase my dreams. So don't listen to those voices and do whatever makes you happy and whatever you want. That's the best advice I can give you because I did suffer a lot at the beginning. <laughs> How is your photography journey going? Actually, recently quite well. It's very unstable. This happens a lot when you're a freelancer. So a couple of months ago, I was struggling because I was focusing too much online and knowing getting clients. So I was a bit tight, let's say. I wasn't bad, but I was tight. But now, I don't know if it's summer, that everyone kind of agreed to book me in the same time. <laughs> so it's been super stressful and I'm working way too much and it's quite hard to keep up with everything. But yeah, I would say it's good. I can complain because I'm making a living out of my camera and that's enough, so it's quite good. Five tips you would give yourself five years ago. Five years ago, I was living the life. I was traveling a lot, I was earning money with my camera and I was super freaking happy. But I should have done more things in regards to my online business. I didn't start my online business five years ago and then the pandemic came and I didn't have clients for obvious reasons and it was a struggle even though I manage through product photography. So my main tip would be to don't overthink things because I used to overthink too much about being online and things like that and I never started it and that kept me back because now I'm doing it and if I would have done it five years ago, I would be way higher, earning way much more money. So that would be one. The second one is related to my YouTube channel. I wish I would have the YouTube channel before. I started it before because I used to travel a lot and this channel was meant to be as well about traveling as a photographer and it will very soon, finally. But if I would have recorded all my videos when I used to travel, I would have incredible content that now I don't have. So that would be my second tip, I guess. Another one, maybe um, focus more on the online business. This is related as well, because I was so focused on client, 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 that then I wasn't too much online. I didn't even push too much with Instagram or anything like that. And I should have started before because I wasn't too worried about social media. I was doing it, but not enough. So probably that as well, be more in social media to create more brand awareness and have more clients. Then another one would be to always focus on myself because I listen too much to external voices about life decisions. And then I end up always doing it anyway, but way later than I expected. So don't listen to those voices <laughs> because it influenced me a lot and this wasn't good. And the fifth one, this one is very personal, okay? <laughs> this one I think is the most personal I'm gonna reply. I was having an amazing time. I was traveling, I was earning money with my camera, I was happy, I was at my best. And then um, something happened, um, I was in love <laughs> and I left London, not for a long time, for a year or so, a bit less than that. And obviously I left all my client work and everything behind because I wanted to get out of London at the same time. So I don't regret, no regrets, please, no regrets, never regret anything because everything is a lesson. <laughs> but yeah, time ago, I, I, pff, the tip I would give to myself is you are first, I'm first. I'm first and uh, if I'm doing well here, I'm not going anywhere. So yes, that's another tip. Always think for yourself and be a bit selfish because in the future, you never know what's gonna happen. Obviously, I'm not with that person anymore and I left everything. <laughs> so yes, I wouldn't do it again, but um, yeah, that's another tip. <laughs> How long I think it would take you as a beginner to build a portfolio and be successful in photography. So this is up to you 
because I work my ass off to have a portfolio. I did my website when I started as a hobby right away, 14 years ago, which the websites were very expensive, very bad quality, and they were awful. But since the very beginning, I worried about looking professional. Even if my pictures were crap, I didn't care. So you got to build your portfolio, your website, shoot with people and work hard. Keep investing in knowledge and keep doing tutorials and building portfolio because from one day to another it's not gonna happen. But you push, I believe you can do it even in a year if you really know what to do. And I do have a lot of videos on my channel about how to do it. A portfolio, how to contact clients the right way and everything you need to know is on my channel and in my private community. But you push yourself, you can do it very quick. Next one would be, what's your opinion on computational photography? Will it kill photography as an art form? This is uh, very interesting. I don't know, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. For sure it's damaging sometimes because now they are relaying too much in AI to do pictures, to edit even. But I think photography still will exist. I'm sorry, photography is way too strong. The art of photography is way too strong and I don't think it will kill it. So that's my opinion, but everyone has different opinions about this, but I think it won't. Um, what decided you to move from Spain to the UK? Is it only because of photography? No. I came basically to chase my dreams as a photographer, but also to learn English because I had no clue about how to say a word of English. Of course, I learned in the school, but I couldn't put two phrases together. I was very bad when I came here. So I wanted to have an adventure, come here. I didn't know anyone. I went to a hostel with many people in the same room. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a house. It was a total disaster at the beginning, but here I am nine years later, full time freelancing. So I did good through many struggles. It cost me a lot, but yeah, the sense of adventure brought me here and learning English was the main because I really wanted to learn. And yes, photography, so all of that. Could you show your exact video scripting and filming process? I'm gonna do a separate video about this if I feel many people are interested about this, but um, I kind of stop scripting because I'm crap at camera. So many people tell me like I'm good at camera, but I think it's because I know myself better and I want to look more natural and sometimes I can't because I'm scripting every word and obviously I'm teaching you. So I don't want to forget any point. If I don't want to forget any point, I have to script it. So mostly when I talk to the camera, if I'm thinking about what I have to say, I make so many mistakes because obviously English is not my first language. And second of all, I forget things because it's normal. So normally I outline my videos and I know what I have to say roughly on the videos and then I start recording. Obviously I plan it, everything I want to teach you and things like that, but I don't script every single word anymore because it didn't work for me, because I was looking fake and I was making mistakes all the time. But I may do a video about this more detailed. Another one would be how to deal with a low light situation where you have no flash, no proper light. Just the one of the room that is not enough. <laughs> this is such a hard question. So the best way um, is whatever the main light is, even if you don't have a lot, maybe a window in a very rainy day, let's say. So put your subject the closest to the light source possible and you're gonna have to have a very good lens that shoot at a very shallow depth of field. So this one I'm shooting with is 1.4. It's a 105 millimeters from Sigma, which is my favorite lens for portraits. And it gives such a blurry effect. So it's very bright. At f1.4, you will to absorb so much light from the surroundings. So you're gonna need a low light lens, basically, because otherwise it's gonna be very hard. If you don't have artificial light, that's your only chance. What do you think about marriage? I'm a male photographer based in Delhi. Being a photographer, which type of girl would be perfect match for me? I love this question. Um, marriage, personally, um, I would do one day, maybe something symbolic with someone I love, but not the big thing of paperwork and things like that. Something huge with hundreds of guests. For me, I would do something in the beach, in a beautiful paradise, something symbolic with my best friends and my family something symbolic. That said, I don't want to do like a big thing, paperwork. I don't need paperwork to show my love to someone and I, I, I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm not into it. I'm respected, but I don't think I want to do something like that. Anyway, that's personally. And for you, which type of girl? It doesn't have to be necessarily a photographer because many people think ah, I want a girlfriend or a boyfriend who is a photographer. No, it doesn't have to be. But you need someone that supports you 
that supports your work and understand it because otherwise you don't want to feel that motivated to shoot and consciously you're going to stop shooting because you know the other person don't, don't enjoy it. So you're going to stop shooting and you're not going to feel that inspired. I think it does a lot your company because if they are photographers or they inspire you or they support you at least, you're going to feel happier, you're going to shoot more and it's going to be better for you to reach your goals. So that's my opinion about your girl. <laughs> Another question that is in Spanish as well. ¿Echas de menos España? ¿Crees que es más fácil o más difícil el mercado fotográfico aquí respecto a UK? Which means, do you miss Spain? Yes, I do a lot because, uh, fortunately enough, my land is beautiful and I'm from the north and the north is incredible. It's very, very beautiful, mountains and sea. So that's my kind of landscape all the time. And then, do you think it's easier or harder the market, the photography market in Spain or the UK? I think it's way better in the UK. And that's why I prefer to be here for now, because in Spain, you don't have photography work. I mean, you can have it, but it's very, very hard. People don't appreciate photography as much. They don't pay as much or they don't even want pictures. They don't understand that well the importance of photography nowadays or even social media. I was shocked by this when I went to Spain two years ago to Ibiza. People are not even in Instagram. I'm talking about businesses. And nowadays you have to be on Instagram if you are a business because it's awareness of the brand. So I do think it's better London, at least where I am now is London because there is a lot of work, people appreciate photography, people pay for it, and there is more photography work. Even though there is a lot of competition, I can promise you that, but I think there is a space for everyone. There is a space for everyone, so yeah, London better. What was your first paid shoot? What camera did you have and what kind of shot was it? It was actually um, with my Canon 30D, which had 8 megapixels. I started with a compact camera, which I regretted a lot because very soon I wanted a DSLR. And then I had a Canon 30D, which was from my father because he's a hobbyist. And um, yeah, I started shooting with that one, surf photography. And my first paid job was from a surfer who loved the pictures I took, but that was my first paid job. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. Do you shoot weddings and how do you market yourself? Everyone asks me this in London as well because weddings is so much money and in London even more. You can get like two grand pounds, which is a lot of money. But I don't do weddings. I did weddings. I did weddings in the past and I did one wedding last year, which I enjoyed a lot because it was a small wedding, very intimate, like the one I want to have maybe one day. <laughs> but I prefer like a small wedding, something which is like a ceremony, something nice, something intimate. And I love it, but this thing of 12 hours shooting is very tiring and it's not something I really would enjoy a lot doing. And about marketing yourself, the best way you're a wedding photographer as well is through your website and keywords, but it may be quite hard. So I would advertise myself in local websites. Depending on the country, you can advertise yourself in websites. What is the photo that when you see it, either makes you smile or sad? If you want to show it great, if not, talk about it. This was hard for me to find and uh, you will see the pictures right now because this was my first solo trip of my life to South America. I went for two weeks to Ecuador to work with surf camps doing content in exchange for a room and for food. It was two weeks and I decided to stay two months. So I lost a flight of 600 pounds because I wasn't ready to come back to London. Why? because I just quit my last job in retail as a fashion stylist. If you follow my channel, you know this, because I was so fed up and I was like, I wanna do photography full time and I'm gonna push myself to be a freelance full time, no matter what. Even if I cannot pay my rent, I will figure it out. And I broke free, I quit the job, I went to Ecuador, and then when I was in Ecuador, I found out I wanted to stay there for two months. So I stayed longer working with these camps. It was an amazing experience. So I would say these pictures don't make me sad. They make me very nostalgic because I see them and I love them. And one of them was published in Business Insider and they're beautiful pictures that they have a lot of stories behind because I took like three days in a row to try to find that picture because it was super busy with tourists all the time. But then the sad part is mostly because when the pandemic started, I stopped traveling. I'm a traveler and you don't even know about that because I started my channel during the pandemic. So I'm gonna come back to my travels and that's why I would say I feel nostalgic when I look at them, but not sad. It's nostalgia because when everything happened, I was feeling very sad, I couldn't do that again. But now I'm gonna be able to do it 
So it's all good and positive now. But yeah, I would say this brings me amazing memories and a lot of nostalgia. And last question, last question. Why you choose London than another place like USA or another? Last question. So the truth is that I wanted to go to America. I wanted to go to California. I had a whole thing about going to California, going to America, because I've been in New York once many years ago and I loved it. And uh, I was in love with photography by then as well. It was just a hobby by then. And I took amazing shots of New York. And uh, it's when I discovered like, oh my God, I love America. And I never came to London or anything before. So I wanted to go to California because obviously there is sun, there is good weather, there is seaside. I wanted to learn English and uh, it attracted me a lot. But the visa situation was very hard and I couldn't speak English by then. So my parents were like, they weren't supporting me at all. But my mom in, in some point, she told me, Laura, why don't you choose somewhere closer? Because you don't even know English. If something goes wrong, you are so far away. <laughs> But to be fair, I just did it because of the visa situation, because you need to be sponsored by a company to be able to go there, find a job first. So it was too complicated. So I just came to London without thinking at all, because it was the first time ever I came here with two suitcases and my camera back, and that's it. So yeah, that's why I chose London, because it was closer. But to be fair, London is incredible for photographers. I think London for photographers it's very good because there is a lot of competition, but there is a lot of space for everyone because there is a lot of photography work. And I feel I talk a lot. I hope you are still here. If you are, well done. You know me better now. And I hope these questions help you as well to find out everything about your career, where you want to go or what you want to do with your life. Or I don't know, maybe it helped you. Comment below if you have more questions and I will happily reply. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for staying till the end. Ciao.